Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, so uh, today we are just finishing off doing our spray foam underneath our plasterboard to meet our floor area. And if you haven't seen our previous video, do pop back uh, and have a look. It just kind of explains the idea behind uh, what we want to do in relation to sealing the floors uh, to the walls and kind of taking out any chance of cold bridge from the old uh, walls to the house and all the internal walls and um, so I'll pop a link up in the corner for you on that so so check that out and um, but as I said we're just uh, finishing off uh, getting the um, getting the foaming done an awful lot of it is dried now we just had a couple of the bedrooms and the ensuite bathroom to finish off so that's all done now so um, let's have a quick look so as you can see, uh, we have all of the rooms done now. So this is one of the rooms we've done today. So it's still expanding out. If I pop into the ensuite bathroom here, you can see all of that is still um, expanding. So uh, once that is all expanded out and hardened in a day or so, we'll come along and cut uh, into these rooms. So uh, the hallway was done yesterday. Um, so that's all completely done. And as you can see from the uh, the walk-in wardrobe uh, to the master bedroom, and that's all done there as well. So the foam has uh, come out a little bit, um, kind of a, a good bit of expansion on that there, but that's okay, we expected that. Um, some of the areas where we didn't put in as much uh, has kind of left us a little bit short. I'm not overly worried about that because it is such a small little cross section. Um, but you know, if you can get bring it out and get a cut flush, that's uh, probably the best thing to do. It just gives you a nice edge then as well for when you're putting on your expansion for your screed and then actually pouring the screed so you don't get any movement on that. So uh, this took approximately 34 uh, of the cans to do the whole house. So it's about 300 linear meters of foam and that's kind of split between some quite shallow areas where it's just a 12 and a half mil plasterboard uh, connected onto the walls. A 50 mil board like we have on this wall, 50 mil over here, uh, 50 mil, and then in the old part of the house, any of the external walls, so for example, in the bathroom area here, um, that is 100 mil depth in there. So there's 100 mil uh, coverage there. And then obviously some of the plasterboard is down a little bit further than others. So kind of averaged out, you know, we've done quite well there. Um, with our foam um, and, and what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and start cutting all of that so so just kind of give you a close-up look of that that's gone completely in there so that's completely hardened there now as well and it's quite a dense foam actually the no-nonsense stuff is good Sudol is very very good we've used that in an awful lot of places but the, the no-nonsense did really work out well and as I said it's not thermal critical that we get this absolutely perfect because it is such a small section most of the wall is done with an insulated slab anyway with a foil back so so that should work out absolutely fine so let's go ahead and uh, start cutting it off flush but we've started now uh, cutting here so as you can see let's cut nice and flush a little bit of dust a little bit of plaster coming off uh, just on the uh, bottom part but that's not a big deal because it's extra little chips that we would have had to take off anyway um so we originally started by using this little guy here, so it's just our little uh, snap-off blade. So we got this in Screwfix for only a few euros, a double pack um, standy unit. So um, we use this on this section here and all the way over to the second wire there. And it's, it's fine, it's quite labour intensive, um, kind of chopping in. It's not difficult work, but it's just it's quite slow going so um, you do have a bit of flex in the blade as well so obviously you want to get that down um, but if you have the means and if you have the tool what I would recommend is grab yourself a reciprocating saw so we have this unit it's coming quite handy uh, on the project just for nipping bits of steel you know if you're cutting nails and everything like that and what we did was while we were picking up the uh, snap off blade we went and we got ourselves a 205 mil air bower a reciprocating saw blade we actually bought it inside a pack that has a number of other uh, blades as well and um, this is the longest one it is a wood blade but it's not going to make a big difference now what you can see is if i just i just did this little section here and this section here you get a little bit more dust but it's a much cleaner cut so if you can see you know be the piece before the cable closest to us was cut with the reciprocating saw 
and the other section after the cable was cut with the blade. So the reciprocating saw is not only faster, but it's doing an either job. So I think we're gonna use that for the rest of this and uh, uh, try and get this done as quickly and as neatly as we possibly can. So as you can see, it's a really nice, tidy job. Tidy job. Um, it's tedious um, to get it done because you're just kind of leaning over the whole time. But um, yeah, very happy with that. The only thing I would say is in some of the deeper areas, like this is where the 100 mil board is, you can see that there is still a bit of a gap there, that the expansion didn't go all the way. But that's absolutely fine because what we can now do is we can just come along and we can just fill that in with a little bit more foam. And uh, that is one thing I found that if you build it up in layers, you're much better off doing that on the uh, kind of thicker areas, the deeper areas, um, because the foam has a tendency, once there's an awful lot of it, it'll start to fall over. So build it up in layers and then possibly you won't get that. This was kind of one of the first, this was the first 100 mil area that we filled in. So uh, hopefully the other areas aren't uh, like that, but it's no big deal. We'll just grab our foam now and we'll just fill that in and then that'll be hardened by tomorrow. And we'll cut it off when we're doing the rest of the uh, walls. <laughs>
So that's all our foaming done and cutting. So as you can see, if I pan back, um, just to give you an idea of what that looks like. So the reciprocating saw is much handier to use than a blade, it's a lot faster. You get a neater cut on the foam. And also the added benefit of any little burr of plaster that is sitting at the bottom of your boards, um, the reciprocating saw will just take that off in one go. So as you can see, we have a nice seal all the way around the bottom there. There are some areas you can probably see just there, there's a little bit of a gap. But what we'll do is we'll just give that a little bit of foam just to seal all that in and then slice it with the knife at the end, it'll be very little. But uh, that's pretty much everything done there as far as the foaming, that's all trimmed. Bathroom's trimmed, our hallway now is trimmed, so we're gonna bag all of this up. Um, the hallway's all done there, and then into the larger main hallway, and then our formal sitting room. So that's all done, and the other large extension is all completely done as well. So I'm very happy with how that turned out. Um, and it's a really nice seal right at the end. So that should give us a good base to pop our little foam expansion piece onto as well. So that's our update complete for today. Um, our next job is to tidy all of the cut foam up and bag all of that and get that ready to go out. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and start rolling out our expansion edge. That's a foil backed expansion edge. It's 150 mil in total with a fold. So you get a perfect seal all the way around the edge uh, for your screed. And it's an eight millimeter thick as well. So it's a soft foam uh, piece of material. So basically means any type of expansion in the screed over time, it will absorb all of that. Um, so once that's all done, um, we'll have our plumber back in and we'll start laying the underfloor or heating pipes and then we'll be good to go to pour our screed and after that then it's second fix final fix for our plumbing and our electrical and we can start getting the heating on we can start getting all of our lights installed everything turned on so it'll be much more habitable in here and we'll get that extra drying out that we need you can see the wall behind me just there needs a little bit more drying out so uh, it's just a time of year being so cold and so damp so we'll get all that dried out done. So I hope everyone's enjoyed that update uh, today. Um, if you do have any questions or comments, please uh, feel free to leave them. Um, and if you'd like to know anything more about what we've done um, previously with the house in the kind of construction stage or with the fit out, um, please feel free to ask because we're always uh, happy to, to answer questions on, on, on project things like this. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe and you can hit the little bell notification as well. So whenever we put up a new video, um, you'll get a little notification as well for that. Um, and if you haven't already, please check out our YouTube channel. Um, you'll see more videos there and a bit more information to help you if you are doing your own project.